last session before 15 minutes break. And now we are going to cover a very hot topic. We have Brian Saffler, Director of Marketing at Databricks. And Brian is going to speak about AI. This is a very hot topic right now. So without further ado, I'll remove myself and I'll leave it to Brian. Brian, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks so much. Appreciate it, Massimo. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Brian Saffler. Uh, my day job is the Director of Marketing for Communications, Media, and Entertainment at Databricks, uh, which is the creator of the data, uh, the data platform called Lakehouse. And we're also one of the most exciting and up-and-coming data and AI startups. Uh, but for my entire life, I've been an entrepreneur. I've been leading product marketing teams and driving digital strategy and exploring the very limits of technology. And today, my talk is titled, AI Won't Replace You, Humans Using AI Will. So over the next 10 minutes, we're going to start to scratch the surface on this incredibly hot and controversial topic. So let's jump in. Uh, for those living under a rock, uh, 2022 was a landmark year for artificial intelligence. And like the internet, we're going to remember a time before and after AI. Uh, for those not familiar with generative AI, it is a type of artificial intelligence that is able to create new content based on input data and algorithms. And this can include generating text and music, images, and other forms of output that are eerily similar to that which is created by humans. Generative AI comes from the field of artificial intelligence, and it draws on inspiration from various sources such as machine learning, computer science, and cognitive psychology. And generative AI, in general, is important because it has the potential to revolutionize various industries and tasks that rely on human creativity and output. For example, generative AI is being used to create new ideas and solutions to problems. It's able to write content for articles, uh, create music, art, and even design new products. And this can help increase efficiency and productivity, as well as enable humans to focus on more complex and valuable tasks. However, generative AI also raises serious ethical and societal questions such as the potential for job displacement and the compounding of human bias. Therefore, it's important as individuals and as a society that we pay attention to the development and the use of generative AI, as well as to consider the implications of this technology. The concept of using computers to generate new content, such as images, music, text, it's been around for several decades, and it's seen significant advancements in recent years with the rise of deep learning and big data. I'm sure you've heard of DALI or Stable Diffusion and maybe most recently ChatGPT, but did you know that leveraging AI for commercial purposes is already a significant and addressable market? This is a graphic from Base10 Venture Capital, and it shows a handful of the 350 companies that are in the generative AI space. And this is a market that largely did not exist two years ago. Now, I recognize that the logos and the text here is really small. So if you wanna see this graphic in greater detail, head over to base10.vc and you can read their blog on how AI becomes mission critical for a full breakdown on this. So what? Like, why are people so blown away by AI technologies, particularly those like ChatGPT? Well, one reason is because this technology is creating content that is nearly indistinguishable from what humans can create and it opens the door for a lot of questions. Let's first start showing some examples. Let's take writing a blog post. You can provide a prompt to a platform like ChatGPT on the topic, the target audience, the length, the tone, even a call to action, and the result is a decently framed rough draft. Or maybe something a little more complex. Let's talk about the strategic development of a marketing campaign targeting a specific demographic. Here's an example of a prompt for ChatGPT to act as an advertising consultant. And for those that have played with this prompt, you may have been surprised how easily ChatGPT can adapt the response based off of the target audience, the product or service, or the call to action that you input. And this, the slight change of one, two, or three of those things completely changes the marketing plan. Now, here's a crazy example. This is David Guetta explaining how he used AI to write and produce a song featuring Eminem rapping lyrics, except 
it's not Eminem. Let's give it a play. This is the future rave sound. I'm getting lost in an underground. This is the future rave sound. I'm getting lost in an underground. Eminem, bro. There's something that I made as a joke, and it works so good, I could not believe it. I discovered those websites that are about uh, AI. Basically, you can write lyrics in the style of any artist you like. So I typed, write a verse in the style of Eminem about Future Rave. And I went to another AI website that can recreate the, vo the voice. I put the text in that and I played the record and people went nuts. So uh, yeah, that's uh, a human creating music of another human who actually didn't create the music. Uh, and to show one final example, I want to demonstrate this example coming out of game developer based in Finland who shared early demos of a point-and-click adventure game that was built with art and assets sourced from two generative AI sources, Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, which are both machine learning text-to-image tools. And this is crazy because the development of a video game is often seen as one of the most complex forms of media or entertainment. It requires code, art. Uh, pipelines, uh, and this whole thing was created largely using assets that were derived from generative AI. So if you're curious to see the potential of tools like ChatGPT, but you don't necessarily want to jump in yourself, I, I encourage you to go to a website called prompts.chat. And it's a community-driven website that hosts some of ChatGPT's most impressive feats. And it's just incredible to see the power of these types of technologies. So a lot of questions people are asking is, can generative AI, can AI in general replace human tasks? And I think we're starting to see that the answer is yes. But the more important question we should be asking is, how will AI replace human tasks? And ethically, what is the role that we want AIs like generative AI to play in our society? And allow me to frame three ways in which humans using AI will change how we do business and outline the need for us to consider the ethics in our response. First, we've already seen some incredible examples from early adopters who are embracing this technology and demonstrating the potential for increases in both human performance and output. Consider the triple constraint principle where we're limited by time and resources and quality. Rule of thumb is that you generally can't have all three. If you want it done fast and cheap, well, your qualities might suffer. Or if you want it, your quality to be really high, it's either going to take a lot of time or a lot of money. But generative AI has the potential to upend this nearly immutable law because humans who use generative AI will be able to reduce some of these constraints. And they're going to see their performance and output increased. As a result, they'll become more valuable. Then that means our jobs are going to have to evolve. Remember back to one of the first examples I shared, writing a blog post. Today, that might be the realm of a copywriter who takes 2,000 words on a given subject, targeting a specific audience, and it might take them a week to research and perhaps compile a draft. Generative AI doesn't replace this human, but it does require their role to evolve. Perhaps they become experts at writing prompts, and with the result, they shift into the role of an editor, able to fine-tune the results to meet their business objectives. All of this can be done within a single day. Finally, new markets are going to be created. What those are, how they come to be, only time will tell. But AI has the potential to democratize industries if and only if we all work together to ensure that generative AI takes an ethical approach to business. And that starts with us. We have to insist on using, and if we pay, only pay for generative AI technologies that are built on public domain and Creative Commons works as well as content that is voluntarily provided to the companies who are training these systems. The key takeaway here is AI is not going away. As creatives, as marketers, we need to be curious and we need to seek to understand to learn how these tools complement our skill sets. And so often people ask, what can we do? So I'm going to show you a couple ideas of how we can participate. First, 
We need to continue discussing the role of humans in managing and controlling generative AI systems and the importance of human oversight and accountability. Next, technology can be scary when it is unfamiliar. And what's happening right now is the democratization of the AI. Once what was the realm of only a few is now accessible to billions of people around the globe, I encourage everyone here to jump in and learn how we can use these tools to optimize whatever it is that we're doing, or we're going to run the risk of being outrun by peers who do. Next, the space here is going to heat up big time, and there are a lot of legal unknowns going on. A best practice is always reading the end user licensing agreements. Do not blindly click through them, even though I know they are painful to read. Especially if you're going to use these tools commercially, get immersed in these tools, particularly around what is fair and legal usage. And it's safe to assume that any and all generative AI assets must be checked for copyright and or plagiarism if you plan to use commercial, commercially. As I mentioned a moment ago, generative AI is an unknown territory right now. And in the case of art, there are many examples of AI impinging on the rights of rights holders. So as long as generative AI is not unfairly stepping on people in the market or misappropriating their name and life's work to create derivative content, then generative AI can and will fundamentally change how we do business. I want to leave you with a quote from historian and professor Yuval Noah Harari. People are usually afraid of change because they fear the unknown, but the single greatest constant in history is that everything changes. This is an uncomfortable conversation for many. I recognize that. But the more that we can become comfortable with being uncomfortable, the more we can be prepared and ready to evolve alongside these technologies. Finally, I want to thank ChatGPT for its help and support in helping me draft this presentation. Questions? Thank you, Brian. This is a super hot topic right now, and it was great to, to hear your take. So if everyone, anyone has a question, just write them in the chat. And all right. Uh, I, I'll get key things started. Uh, curious, how? I, I, I want to ask you a random prediction, which probably is very challenging. Right now, ChatGPT cannot think. I mean, it's not really, I would say it's not capable of creating something completely new. It's always re-elaborating something that already exists. How long do, and that's a competitive advantage for humans and for people with their thought leadership and so on to create unique content or whatever. How long do you think before AI can actually generate something that is completely new and come out with brand new ideas? I, I think AI already is, but the question is whether or not it's recognizable by humans is another question. I think... There's already been AI generated art, but it doesn't necessarily look appealing to humans because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And in the case of the AI, it's that's what it considered pretty. Um, I feel like there's this push and pull, right? There's on one end of the spectrum, what is right for the public good? And on the other side is what is right for the health and monetization of a business. And you're going to have this push and pull between teams because I think for the creators of these AIs, whether it's OpenAI or Google or Microsoft or otherwise, like you're going to have a lot of teams out there who want to get this technology out in the world and showcase what it can do. But there's also, you know, massive consequences that could possibly happen, many of which is unforeseen. And I think smarter, smarter. more level-headed humans hopefully will prevail and that they'll take a, a cautious approach. Service of humans, helping support humans, making them more productive and more valuable, that's absolutely and always going to be something that people will find a new market for and find value in, and it will be less abrasive. The moment AI starts generating on its own and creating things on its own, regardless of how humans interpret it, it's going to stoke and create fear despite and regardless of whatever impact that single creation has. So I think in a lot of ways, we are seeing AI create things today. And we're also going to have to temper how quickly we open the floodgates to something like this. Awesome. And for a 
product marketing team, what's the first thing that they should test? If they jump on ChatGPT now, what's the first yeah. prompt they should test and the first function where it's safe to use AI today? I feel like content generation is a great way to leverage AI in a really simple, easy to use, getting started way, creating a blog post, writing social posts, uh, writing emails, um, BDR, SDR, response emails, like those are tedious and, and templatized to write. Like in a lot of ways, you can use a platform like ChatGPT to give you a great framework in which you can then edit. And I always encourage people never to just copy paste what ChatGPT gives you. Oftentimes, because it's trained on other models, it's lifting from somebody else's work. And so therefore, there's a level of plagiarism you need to be aware of. But it certainly can give you a framework like, oh, I didn't think about adding that paragraph here as a call to action. Great. Let me tighten that up and make it in my own language. I think that's really important. But I think content creation today is ripe for teams. And like I mentioned before with the writing a blog post, I can't tell you how many times I've written a blog post that has taken me days, even weeks to draft. I use ChatGPT now to give me a great framework and I can you know, reduce my time to market on a, on a piece of content exponentially as a result. So I, I absolutely think this is an area that marketers should be investing in right now, understanding and learning these tools, because it's only a matter of time before they become um, commercialized and more broad based. And those who know how to use them are going to be immensely valuable. Awesome. Ryan, thank you so much. This was super insightful. Thanks for joining us. And for everyone else, we are doing a, small, a short 15 minutes break and we'll be back on stage at noon 50. <laughs>